Hello, well, welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is entitled Digital Pathology, uh, Digital Slide Review and Case Presentation. Uh, it's part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture between the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter, who makes possible the technology. Our case today comes from the realm of soft tissue pathology. It's a 59-year-old man who's had a mass present in his hand for over a year and uh, finally uh, determined to have this uh, removed. Well, when we think about masses in a, a distal extremity like the hand, uh, there are a number of things that should come into to consideration. Uh, perhaps first on that might be fibromatosis or maybe giant cell tumor of tendon sheath, but there are a variety of other soft tissue lesions, including schwannomas or other nerve-derived tumors, uh, digital mucous cysts or ganglions, uh, as well as uh, vascular-derived tumors like glomus uh, a tumor that could also present in this fashion. We also would have to, of course, consider things like um, <clears throat> granuloma annulari, uh, infectious granulomata, and other sorts of things uh, that might enter into the differential. But in terms of the majority of cases, uh, these uh, lesions will handle those. So uh, the lesion was removed, and as you can see, uh, it's a solid lesion, it's not cystic. Um, and uh, the lesion has uh, modest cellularity. And towards the periphery here, I think we can see that there's sort of a uh, tenosynovial type of uh, tissue associated with it, a few delicate uh, vessels, and a very uh, sort of collagenous appearance with some uh, sort of mucoid appearance around some of the uh, uh, vessels. Uh, it's not uh, very cellular. There's no atypia. Um, although uh, you know, occasionally we have slightly enlarged or occasionally back-to-back -back cells with a little bit of uh, modest uh, variability in shape and size. So uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, one end of the extreme um, for a giant cell tumor. Uh, it's actually a giant cell tumor without giant cells. Uh, it's certainly derived from the tenosynovium, as we can see here on the mar margins. It's got this uh, connection. Um, we have histiocytes associated with it, um, and uh, immunohistochemical staining with this case showed that there was a, a predominant uh, CD68 uh, and 163 positive uh, uh, complement of cells, uh, along with uh, some uh, uh, benign vasculature. Well, uh, what is the proper uh, terminology for this tumor? Well, if we think of tenosynovial tumors, there are uh, primarily uh, the localized types, which have uh, come under a variety of uh, names, including nodular tenosynovitis or giant cell tenosynovitis or giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. And then there are the diffuse lesions, which also go by the term pigmented bilonodular tenosynovitis. Um, so this would be in the localized uh, category. Um, and uh, the uh, tumor uh, nomenclature is uh, favored now uh, on the basis of uh, a number of uh, reasons. But as our case illustrates, there's quite a spectrum of changes uh, that can be seen. Now, here's perhaps a more typical uh, lesion, which has a variable cellularity, um, some uh, areas of uh, foamy histiocytes, some areas of uh, uh, mononuclear cells. Uh, as you can see here, pre the predominant form of cells in this lesion uh, with uh, amphiphilic cytoplasm, some inflammatory cells here, um, and then occasional uh, multinucleate cells, as we see here. Um, they may also be associated with areas of pseudovascular changes or angiomatous type changes, uh, collagenization, uh, pigment deposition, uh, I think we can look around here, and of course these occasional giant cells that you can see here uh, in some uh, clusters here in this arrangement here. Not every tumor is going to have all of the same features, obviously. Um, 
but uh, the characteristic growth patterns of being either uh, nodular and localized, as in this case, uh, versus diffuse. Here's another example to further illustrate the spectrum of changes we can see. This lesion has a slightly multinodular appearance, uh, but it's still fairly localized. Uh, but it's sort of bridging that category between a diffuse and a localized uh, pattern uh, to a certain degree. Here we also can begin to see uh, some of the uh, uh, pigmentation that can be seen in these lesions. Well, let's see, I guess I'm not finding it here. I thought there was some hemosiderin in uh, this uh, tissue as well. Um, well. Let's see if we can find that. Um, so you can see the range of uh, findings here uh, in these uh, tumors. Um, and here we illustrate some of the other features uh, as we begin to get maybe some cholesterol-like clefts, uh, maybe even calcifications uh, in some of these uh, lesions. Uh, Pseudocystic type uh, structures, as you see here. Um, with sort of the cells falling apart. And the giant cells typically are not atypical. They uh, may have occasional uh, enlarged nuclei um, and be a variable size and shape. Here's one with a little bit of an asteroid uh, body there. Uh, and here we can begin to see a little bit of the pigmentation that can be seen in these tumors. Here you can see some gray-brown or yellow-brown uh, hemosiderin pigment uh, in several of these cells. And that can be quite variable in amount. It can be very prominent uh, or uh, very limited uh, in uh, distribution. And finally, here's an example with uh, a bit more uh, pigment de de deposition that you can see even at low magnification. Again, it's a nodular lesion, localized, tenosynovial origin, uh, and here you see just uh, uh, extraordinary amounts of uh, yellowish-brown pigment, uh, a little bit more spindle-shaped uh, pro process to some of these uh, cells, um, as you can see there, and uh, relatively few giant cells. So uh, I guess you could say that if you were to take the uh, mononuclear cells, the pigment, the uh, giant cells, uh, fibrous stroma, uh, cholesterol clefts, uh, and uh, those sorts of features as being um, typically seen in these lesions. Uh, and then a sliding scale um, that can range from virtually none to uh, abundant and predominant. Uh, you would have the, the idea of the kind of variability that can be seen in these lesions. Uh, here we see a lot of these uh, foamy histiocytes here. You can see the pale uh, sort of uh, delicate uh, foamy cytoplasm in these histiocyte cells, a few ad associated lymphocytes and so forth. So those are features that can be present across a wide spectrum of uh, choices in this lesion. Uh, another lesion, again, localized, staining differences, of course, you may have in your lab, variable cellularity. Uh, here's a few giant cells here. Um, in this lesion, there's one. Uh, and the admixed uh, lymphocytes here, a few lymphocytic inflammatory cells, uh, certainly gives rise to the uh, prior terminology of synovitis um, and that terminology. So uh, each of the uh, various names in the backdrop uh, for this lesion uh, helps to highlight um, some of the features that you might uh, see <clears throat> in these lesions. Pigmentation, uh, inflammatory cells, uh, giant cells, and so forth. So the localized form of uh, tenosynovial giant cell tumor uh, has this mixture of features that we've described uh, that can be quite variable. Uh, this localized form is usually more commonly associated with small uh, joints, uh, digits, wrist, ankle, uh, 
occasionally knee, hip, and elbow, but certainly most frequently um, in the uh, distal extremities and the small uh, joints. Uh, this is usually a slowly growing mass, adult patients, sometimes more frequent in women, um, and it's not usually associated with pain. Uh, these lesions have been found to be associated with variable translocations with the CSF1 gene, uh, which is a colony stimulating factor uh, gene uh, with variable uh, translocation partners. Um, and of course, typically uh, immunohistochemistry for the histocyte markers, occasionally uh, actins and other muscle markers can be uh, seen in these uh, mononuclear cells as well. There certainly are other uh, findings that can be found, but typically you don't need to do immunohistochemistry or even you know, fish testing for these clonal changes to make the diagnosis in the appropriate clinical setting and microscopic findings if you're aware of how that spectrum is. Now, uh, in selected circumstances, the lesions can be uh, more diffuse, uh, more multifocal, um, with uh, variable other presentations. And so here we see sort of these uh, papillary projections into a synovial uh, line space with multiple nodules. Um, and guess what? We see the same kind of histology that we've seen in the earlier nodular lesions. Variable numbers of giant cells, uh, mononuclear cells, occasional lymphocytes, um, fairly bland cytology, um, and a fibrocollagenous uh, matrix in the background, um, plus or minus occasional areas of pigment deposition. Uh, we'll see if we've got some here in this uh, lesion, uh, along with uh, this nice inflammatory process. I think over here, we've got some pigment deposition. Yeah, I think so. Here you can see some of the nice hemocytorin deposition uh, that gave this lesion its uh, uh, commonly used name, pigmented bilonodular synovitis. Well, in fact, this is not an inflammatory lesion, as we've indicated. Uh, this is a um, uh, clonal uh, benign neoplastic proliferation. Here's another slide, another image. Uh, this one with abundant uh, hemocytorin in uh, many of the nodular uh, cells and the, the tenosynovial cells associated with this. So again, we see the uh, uh, changes that are associated with this. Well, in this diffuse type, uh, I've mentioned the term PVNS. Uh, this is usually intraarticular and most commonly large joints, most commonly the knee, uh, occasionally the hip or ankle. Um, this can be associated with recurrent hemarthrosis if uh, they drain the joint, um, but more commonly it would be associated with some pain or swelling. Uh, because this is a neoplastic lesion, it does have some uh, sort of uh, loss of growth inhibitions and it may erode or even invade into the bone uh, and has the potential for recurrence. Uh, so uh, those uh, features make it uh, a little bit more of a challenge to, to manage than the localized types. So our final sign out diagnosis today, even though we saw no giant cells, is a tenosynovial giant cell tumor of the localized type. So uh, these have been reported and uh, we need to be aware of the, the spectrum of disease that can be seen uh, in this disorder. And that's why I've shown you several examples. I hope you'll come back and take a look at the uh, digital slides in this presentation. The link to those is below. Um, and uh, you know, if you liked our program, uh, please uh, do hit the like button and subscribe so that you'll catch uh, future releases from our uh, channel. We try to release uh, um, uh, new videos uh, regularly. Uh, so there's always some new content, uh, as well as the uh, many uh, 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 educational uh, materials that are presented on our channel uh, that date back several years uh, and uh, are constantly being reviewed or updated as uh, need be. So uh, thanks again for joining me. I'm glad you're here. 
and I look forward to seeing you uh, next time.